guys, this is the Robo Jacket, and this is the robot that we built for the Robot M1 Weekend Challenge called. So, first we're going to start with the drivetrain. So, as you can see, we did end up going with the stilted drivetrain, which worked really well for getting um, over the crater. And um, so, a few things that we do differently is we'd like to make the chain runs a little bit shorter, and so hopefully find a better place for these motors. And then we also did switch to using Omnis in the front just to allow us to turn a little bit better. And then we also need to figure out a slightly better way to brace the front half of the uh, drivetrain here because it was a little bit flimsy in the front. Yeah, for these Omni wheels we put here in the front, we had to 3D print some little spacers here in order to prevent the Omni wheels from uh, colliding with the sprockets here in the front. Uh, if there's one thing that we could change about this is that we put the Omni wheels in the back so that the, the car, the robot would pivot through the back instead of through the front and make it easier for the uh, collection mechanism to collect. Yeah, so as far as the uh, scoring portion of the robot goes, uh, we sort of stuck with this design of the uh, sweeper uh, and the surgical tubing connected to a uh, 20 to 1 Handymark Never Rest motor. Uh, inside we added a little bit of a slope uh, to help with the game elements sort of uh, rolling out easily and we found that that didn't actually uh, make it any harder for the, co uh, the collected elements to stay inside. Uh, and we stuck with this sort of uh, linear slide lift design uh, which is basically a bunch of like Home Depot drawer slides that are attached together. Uh, and the big sort of most important aspect with this is finding some string that is low friction and also making sure that the uh, string is always fully encapsulated in any of your pulleys. So on these pulleys here you can see how we have the gaff tape running over so that the string, uh, even if it wants to like hop out or the string gets loose somewhere, it won't actually hop all the way off the pulley because uh, it likes to do that quite a bit. Uh, and so uh, then in the back to drive that whole system up, we have uh, two Rev Core hex motors uh, back here that are all on an axle, and it's just in line in the same uh, hexagonal axle with these two, two spools. Uh, the one spool was being used for a downhaul to uh, pull uh, the whole mechanism down, so it would spool around the opposite direction. So as you're going uh, up and this string is getting pulled in, the other one's getting released, and then they come back together the other way to pull the mechanism back down. Uh, and so essentially, uh, that all spools up down there uh, and these if we were to sort of change something about this it would be to make these spools a little bit deeper uh, again with that string encapsulation because this string was liking to uh, sort of hop off that mechanism and that was the problem we had there. So after we built the drivetrain and the main scoring mechanism we worked on two kind of like uh, I guess additional mechanisms the first of which being the hook right here we went through like uh, a few different iterations trying to get something that angled down or kind of more of like something that came across and went down. We found that since it's such a like thin area that you have to get through to hook onto, it was much easier just to kind of have a horizontal piece in a really tiny hook. And our robot was able to support itself that way. The main problem, like while this uh, design that we ended up with as a hook worked very well, the limitations came back to the problems we had with our lift. Uh, essentially, while we did have a backhaul mechanism which helped us like pull ourselves up. Uh, one of the issues was we weren't able to break ourselves and like lock in that position. We would need to have some sort of break implemented in the pulley system. And additionally, we worked on a marker dropper. So our marker here, and we have a little servo. This essentially clamps onto it right like this, and then just drops it in autonomous. Uh, I guess one of the most important things with that is you want to have, like, design your marker and then design your uh, dropper and mechanism around the marker rather than kind of making a marker that you think is cool and then designing a dropper that you think is simple. It can actually be more complicated than you think. And, on, and, and in autonomous, you're going to want something that drops very consistently. That's all for us. This was the Robo Jackets in our Robot in One Weekend Challenge. Uh, leave any comments or questions you have below in the comment section. Thanks for watching.